Here's a typical human somatic cell as seen during the interphase stage of the cell cycle, before it begins dividing by mitosis. It has an intact nucleus and nucleolus, surrounded by the nuclear envelope, and the DNA within the nucleus is in the form of chromatin, not chromosomes, which only appear during mitosis. Remember that interphase is not a stage of mitosis. It's the long period of time in between mitotic events. The cell spends interphase actively preparing to divide. It used to be thought years ago that interphase was a resting phase, but the cell is, instead, very busy undergoing G1, S, and G2, and copying everything the new daughter cells will need for survival. The appearance of this cell is going to change significantly as we enter the first stage of mitosis, prophase. During early prophase, the nucleus, its nuclear envelope, and nucleolus are breaking down. They are not needed during mitosis and so are temporarily disassembled. The cell is getting rid of anything it doesn't need so it can devote all of its resources to cell division. The centrosomes, along with their centrioles, are beginning to migrate to opposite poles of the cell. The centrioles are synthesizing microtubules that will soon play a major role in mitosis. The chromatin has also condensed into distinct chromosomes. Remember, each chromosome consists of the original parent DNA and its copy. This DNA was copied during the S phase of interphase. In late prophase, the chromosomes are randomly distributed without much order or organization. The nuclear envelope continues to be broken down into fragments, and the chromosomes begin moving into the cytoplasm. The cell needs lots of room to distribute the chromosomes and make the mitotic spindle. We can see new microtubules being assembled into spindle fibers by the centrioles. The cell is 100% committed to nuclear division at this point here in late prophase, as mitosis has begun full steam ahead. The two sister chromatids that make up each chromosome are attached to each other at a binding point called the centromere, which contains a protein region called the kinetochore. As the centrosomes have now migrated to opposite poles of the cell, the spindle fibers produced from the centrioles attach to the kinetochores and drag the sister chromatids toward the middle of the cell, the equatorial region, in preparation for the next stage of mitosis. In metaphase, the second stage of mitosis, the mitotic spindle is completed and resembles a top-shaped apparatus that looks like an American football. The tapered endpoints are at the centrosome regions, and its wider middle region is where the chromosomes are brought to and lined up at the metaphase plates. The asters are collections of short microtubules arranged at the centrosomes that help attach the spindle to the cell membrane so it is properly aligned on its vertical and horizontal axes. There is lots of order and symmetry during metaphase. The sister chromatids have been brought by the spindle to the equator of the cell, this middle region, which is also called the metaphase plate. Remember that meta is in the middle. The spindle is arranged along both its axes, and the sister chromatids are lined up along their axis. The cell is preparing for the separation of the sister chromatids in the next stage of mitosis, anaphase. If the spindle complex is off-center, if it's tilted in any direction or out of alignment, then there won't be an even separation of the sister chromatids. There will be extra DNA ending up in one daughter cell and less DNA in the other daughter cell. The goal here is to make copies of these cells, not variations in chromosome number. We want the same number of chromosomes, the same number of genes, moving into each new daughter cell. The third stage of mitosis, anaphase, is a very animated stage. This is early anaphase, where the spindle begins to disassemble as its microtubule fibers come apart. 
the sister chromatids detach from their centromeres and are dragged to opposite poles of the cell, moving toward their respective centrioles and centrosomes. Nuclear division has just occurred, where the DNA has separated into two equal but opposite sets. As the spindle fibers become shorter and shorter, the chromosomes are pulled back toward the centrosomes. Now that they're separate, the sister chromatids are referred to as daughter chromosomes and will be moving into the two daughter cells. As the cell moves from early to late anaphase, a little groove called the cleavage furrow begins to form in the cell membrane. It's created by a loop of microfilaments called the contractile ring that will eventually cut the cell membrane of this large cell in half into two separate and smaller daughter cells. The contractile ring shrinks in diameter like a drawstring when you pull it closed. The final phase of mitosis is telophase. It's basically prophase in reverse. The chromosomes start to unravel back into chromatin. The nuclear envelope and nucleolus begin to reform. And the spindle continues to break down since it's no longer needed now that the chromosomes have separated. The cleavage furrow gets deeper as the contractile ring continues to shrink in diameter eventually cutting the cell into two separate daughter cells. Now that telophase and mitosis are completed, the single large cell must divide into two separate and identical daughter cells. This is carried out through the process of cytokinesis, the division of the cytoplasm, where the large volume of cytoplasm in one cell is separated into two smaller volumes. The resulting daughter cells receive all of the organelles, proteins, and ribosomes that they need to begin their independent lives. In cytokinesis, the cleavage furrow gets deeper and deeper until the cell membrane is cut in half by the contractile ring and the two daughter cells are separate. This action is similar to slicing a soap bubble in half using a loop of string. The cell membranes quickly close so the daughter cells won't burst.